Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 97 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, uh, where I'm out just hanging around with my nuclear reactor and antimatter production line. Uh, made a few tweaks, which you may or may not be able to notice. Uh, jumps out a little bit, I guess. Um, I, 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 I was kind of getting tired of not knowing how much polonium I had. Um, one downside to these ultimate pressurized tubes is just how much they store. Uh, if we look at the basic pressurized tube, each tube stores eight buckets worth of gas. So that means, like, if you place two tubes next to each other, you're storing 16 buckets, 3, 24, etc., etc., etc. So each tube stores a lot of gas, right? Uh, but we are using ultimate pressurized tubes, which stores 16,000 buckets or 16 million millibuckets worth of gas per block. That's a lot of gas. <laughs> That's a lot of gas. So remember before I had like three um, radioactive waste barrels that were just buffers uh, that were basically always empty because we had ultimate lines underneath them feeding into uh, the polonium. So until we hit like, you know, millions of buckets worth of, of gas, we would not start backstuffing the radioactive waste barrels, which comparatively hold a very small amount. They store about 64 buckets worth. Uh, as you can see, this one in the back is full. So I was like, I'm really frustrated not knowing how much, you know, polonium we have. And even more so, not knowing how much polonium we have left to process. Because for the longest time, I've been like, yeah, I've been trying to run this thing, but I haven't entirely. Uh, and I would love to know, like, how much do we actually have here? What's up? How does this look? So I decided to replace the basic pressurized, or the ultimate pressurized tubes underneath the barrels with basic ones. And this is basically how many barrels I needed to place to cover all my polonium. So I started off by basically, and I just did this off camera because it was a little bit tedious, but I want to tell you guys about it because I don't want you to be like, what did you do off camera, Dyer? But I basically connected the ultimate tube that used to be here, made like a long line of them and put barrels all along the top so that I completely drained out the tube that was running underground here. And then I drained out of all those barrels into all these barrels. And then I, I turned off my reactors for a bit and processed all the backlog of nuclear waste. And we had a lot of backlog to process to the point where I decided to actually throw down another solar neutron reactor over here. Uh, and because I did throw on the other one and because we've got these guys on normal mode, I did connect a piece of redstone in the back. So that way, if I turn them off, they will both kind of fill up with, with nuclear waste and stop processing. And then all my nuclear waste can come over here making uh, plutonium, right? That's what this makes is, is, is plutonium. So that's basically what's up that's the gist of where we're at so that that was pretty cool i thought that was neat so we now have a, a an idea of how much polonium we need to deal with over here right um so if we if we kind of go down the line we'll see some of these are very s small and not filled i don't know like what the prioritization is but i feel like this is the one is that going down or up that seems like it's going up right what's this guy doing he's nice and empty I don't, I don't understand like which ones are which but i guess they'll eventually stabilize and we'll be able to look at one and be like i can't even tell you right now if we're producing more polonium than we're processing in the antimatter thing i have no idea i mean it definitely looks like we're net gaining on some of these guys which is you know a little concerning but not all the way i, I have no idea i have no idea uh, but part of the reason I wanted to do this, and I wish there was a larger radioactive barrel, or like a multi-block, so I could very easily see, okay, yeah, in one block space, this is all the polonium we have sitting around waiting to be processed. So that would be neat. That would be my, that would be my wish. A multi-block radioactive waste barrel. That, you know, kind of like, kind of like this thing back here, but for radioactive waste. And if you break any piece of it, poof, radioactive explosion and bad things happen. That would be fun. That would be neat. That's all I'm saying. It would be neat. Uh, so anyway, wanted to let you know that I did that between episodes. Clearly, we have a lot of this back stuff. Um, I've got, you know, these guys running. Their fuel is doing pretty good. Uh, we keep running low. And what I might wind up doing is is actually flipping this and, and doing... Because we've got a lot of this to clear through, right? I think what we should do is clear all this out and empty these barrels. Like, I would like to finish my antimatter production. So to do that, and I was supposed to be working on a brown tech today and we will get to it, but I really wanted to touch on this real quick because I'm, I'm getting to the point where it's like, I need to do something about this. This massive amount of polonium we have is getting ridiculous. 
Um, so what I'm thinking I might do, part of my problem with fissile fuel is I keep running low on it. Uh, and the reason I keep running low on it is I, you know, I'm surprisingly running out of uranium occasionally, right? Like if we look now, I bet my uranium, yeah, my uranium's out. Part of the problem we're out of uranium is because we've got ultimate pressurized tubes here and they've got a bunch of processed chemical uranium stuff in there, like the uranium oxide, right? So there's probably like thousands and thousands worth of ingots of uranium inside these tubes. Um, so that's part of that. But the other thing that we frequently run out of, believe it or not, is fluorite. And I have to keep going around and plopping down my miner to process large amounts of fluorite. And you can even see we're getting low again. We're around 3,000. You think that's a lot, but like I just mined like 20,000 like, you know, 20 minutes ago. And it, it burns through very quickly. It really, really does. Um, so I think my plan is to turn plutonium, because remember, plutonium can turn into the plutonium pellets. Uh, and spent nuclear waste. And those pellets can be combined with uh, polonium pellets to make SPS casing, or we can chemical injection them with salt or hydrogen chloride. You know that thing that we have automated and I'm currently voiding? And turn one plutonium pellet into four reprocessed fissile fragments, right? Uh, and that can be in a chemical oxidizer turned into two buckets of fissile fuel, which is actually a pretty good amount. So I think we should consider doing that. Um, and that's what I'm gonna work on right now. I just decided, that's a decision I just came to. I'd like to burn through all of this. And the only way we're really gonna burn through all of this is by taking all our nuclear waste that we're producing, okay? And processing it into plutonium and not producing any more polonium until we burn through it all. And then I'll be curious to see how much antimatter we wind up with. Cause I'm at like 7.5, you know, buckets over there. It's a lot of antimatter. That's a lot of antimatter, okay? Just saying. So let's do that. That's only fun. Hopefully, yes. Um, and then we'll get back to environmental tech. Depending on how long this takes, it'll either be this episode later or next episode. But that's kind of the plan. Deal? Cool. All right, so plutonium and all that things and plutonium, right? So let's do this. This shouldn't, I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. Wow, we have a lot of plutonium pellets, don't we? Yes, sir. So we need a chemical injection chamber, which, by the way, we can get, you know, factory versions of. Uh, and then we want the chemical oxidizer. And I think I'm gonna line that up over here. Probably just put it right here. I don't see why not. And then we can eject that fissile fuel into this dude, into this quantum entangleover. And that might be cool, right? So let's start with um, the chemical injection chamber. That's gonna go right next to that dude. And for that, we're going to need uh, one of these. Okay, uh, and that's Close, but no cigar. Now we're there. And then you will turn into one of these. I love the control click auto class and refined storage. That was something that I've, I mean, I know I've said this before, but that was something that I always missed from the logistics pipes mod that allowed you to like, not need to know all the things perfectly. And it was just beautiful. So chemical injection chamber is ready. That's going to convert um, our, there's a lot of recipes here, but that's gonna convert our plutonium with hydrogen chloride into fissile fuel fragments, right? Um, so do we wanna put that right here? I don't see why not. I think that that should work because this is our fissile production line, right? So we could set that up. Let's, let's make sure that everything is, you know, not, you know, so I think, you know, bottom is probably going to be power. I might do something with the back. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so you're ready to go. Is this where I really want you? I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it because there's some thoughts to be had here, right? But I think that seems fine, right? Uh, and then the... Um, actually, you're not going here. You're going here, right? And the chemical oxidizer... We'll go here. And I might wind up muffling. Huh. The logistical sorter, huh? Yeah, that's the one I want to mute. Much better, right? Much better. All right, so chemical injection chamber will go there. We'll upgrade him as needed, right? And then we can take you 
and make one of you. Cool. Okay. So your job then will be to, for items, you're going to input from the right. And you, for items, will output to the left. Okay. And then for gases, you're going to output to the left. Right? Because you are the fissile fuel. And then you, um, for gases, you should be on input on all sides, right? Perfect. Cool. So that way, if I turn this off, we will know that it's behaving. And that'll be neat. Uh, so that's something we'll check in a minute. Cool. Now we've got ultimate pressurized tubes here. We don't really need that. We want ultimate universal cables for these two bad boys so that they get all the powers. Cool. Now we want to eject plutonium into this guy here. And then on this dude, we're going to want to get the hydrogen chloride stuff, right? Is that right? Because um, what we have is plutonium. So we want to do U to U to you, right? So the oxidizer, which is this, really only needs the fissile fragment. Like, that's it. That's it. It just goes in there. So this doesn't need any access to any sides. This one needs to receive both items and the, the gas, right? Which is hydrogen chloride, which we're making back at our base. So I might want to do a quickie hydrogen chloride thing, right? Because this is the salt, right? That's sodium. The other thing he's making, obviously, is chlorine, which up here is turning into hydrogen chloride, right? So if we wanted to, we could get a quantum entangleloper. Oh, good, I've got two of them. Let's reset them so that nothing I place down right now does anything. It shouldn't. Yeah, part of me wishes this is the way they came out of the box, was just not connected to anything. Not that, you know, placing it down by default, it does wipe the channel that it's connected to. So the first time you, you know, the first time you place it, it's not going to do anything. But still, dire paranoid. All right, so you will be gases can input on the top, and you will be a new channel called hydrogen chloride cool and then that hydrogen chloride should drain into here and fill up an internal buffer and then over here <coughs> we will have this thing um and what i'm going to do is i'm going to inject it from the right that sound like a cool plan? So your side config for gases will be to input from the right. Your side config for gases will be to output to the left. And you're going to be connected to the hydrogen chloride thingy. And that should be working. Uh, side config gases eject on. Now it should be working. Yes, hydrogen chloride. Beautiful. Loving it. All right, now we want an exporter from here along with some cables. And we'll probably want a speed upgrade and maybe even a stack upgrade. So let me just get one of you and then we can stack upgrade. And that should be a quick craft because we already have three speed upgrades in there. He said lying to himself. There it is. Cool. Now for you, for items, you're going to input on the back. Cool. And you're going to input plutonium, which by the way in this form is stable, so you're allowed to hold it. I don't know how true to life that is. Can you hold uranium in, or plutonium in your hand? I'm assuming probably not, but what do I know? I just make Minecraft videos. Oh, that's right. You guys existed for a reason, didn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Cool. Uh, so for the cabling here, where's our nearest cable? Actually, not very near. So we'll just have to run some. Trying to do so in as small a dire wire way as possible. Hey, I hear I hear noises that tells me something's working. Cool. 
So now you're processing, right? Let's get our upgrades. So I bet I can put gas upgrades in this thing. Uh, I would imagine that you can accept gas upgrades. You can, which means less hydrogen chloride use, which is just more efficiency overall. Cool. And now you're reprocess fissile fuel fragments, and you should auto eject your items, which means they go in there. And then you're going to speed and energy upgrade. And that is pretty cool beans. Look at that go. Nice. Nice. So he's getting his fissile fuel. So even though you're producing fissile fuel, you need an internal buffer filled, it looks like. So I'm all about that. That is very cool. And that should be working, right? That should be working. Um, if I were to... Yeah, I would say that that should be good. So now all of our nuclear waste that we're producing from our nuclear reactors is being turned into plutonium because these guys aren't running. See, the arrow's not white. Um, and it's all coming in here, all 350 millibuckets per tick, give or take. And then it's all being processed into plutonium, which again needs fluorite. So we're gonna still need fluorite for things, right? See, we're already at 653. Remember we had 3,000 at the beginning of this episode? We burned through like almost 3,000, we were at 3.3K, right? Or 3.6K, something like that. We burned through almost 3,000 fluorite in the, in the time that I've been recording this segment alone. Okay, in case anybody's ever unclear about how much fluorite we're burning through between this going on, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a lot. It's a lot. To keep, these, to keep these things running is a lot of work, right? Fluorite being a big part of them. So I'm gonna have to do my digital miner thing. I might do a fluorite dimension. I'm just saying I might do a fluorite dimension. Does fluorite have a storage block? Because then we'd be really bonkers. No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Everybody was commenting on the fact that I didn't do uranium storage blocks instead of uranium ore blocks um, in, in, in my um, RF Tools Dimensions thing. I don't have a good answer as to why I did that other than I just didn't think of it. Like, if I'm be, like I could come up with some like lunatic answer like, oh, I wanted to do Korea. No, I just didn't think of it. Like, you're right. I probably, that would have been more efficient, right? Uh, but whatever. Still cool. Still cool. All right, so that means we are still getting a net gain on power. We are now making even more power in the long run. And you're sitting at 1.3 trillion RF, which is bananas. And I would say that's that's it, right? That's it, we're done, we're good, we're good. We're making lots of fissile fuel now, probably more than, I don't know that we're making more than we need. I have no idea if we're making more than we need, but it's working and that's cool. And eventually this will back stuff, I assume. I assume this will eventually back stuff. But that's neat. All right, cool. And then my goal is to, to clear all this out. Like eventually these will be all empty. And that would be a dream come true. They're getting there though. Like they're starting to empty, believe it or not. I would love to see this completely empty at some point. And then we'll just, you know, call it a day. We'll say, all right, we've got enough antimatter for now. And then if we need more in the future, we can deal with that. Cool. Uh, at some point, my big storage thing will go fill up back there. Hello, buddy. Look. I like at the beginning of the season, I was like nervous about killing these guys. And now it's just like, I do not want any part of you. Go away. I felt bad killing them, but now it's just like, you're annoying. Uh, at some point, we will back stuff on energy, right? We'll fill up that giant energy storage thing back at our base, which will fill up this internal buffer, which will start backing up steam, which will back this up, which will back this up, but then we won't worry because our little powered latch over here will protect us. So we should be okay with that. Um, it'll be a while before that happens. Probably once we burn through all our polonium. We have a small net gain on power, but it's going to take a really long time for that net gain that we have going on because it's like minus... 16.5 and plus 16.8. So it's a really small amount of RF that we're building up here. We've got, you know, half a trillion RF to fill up still at that rate, it'll take a while. But once all that polonium's gone, then it'll fill up really fast and that'll be a thing. So that's a, let's let's say that that's a completed thing. Um, yeah, nothing else to do here. I think we're really quite good. I'll think to make sure that I'm pretty sure we're fine. So now that we've done that and I can just kind of put away the whole concept of, of dealing with antimatter, let's, Environmental tech. So last episode, we started prepping all the stuff we needed, and we spent a significant amount of time 
automating lithorite interconnects. Whether or not we're going to have a problem with those and automating that machine in the future, I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll find out. Um, so to go along with this, we need 20 frames of tier two, tier one or higher, right? So crafting that should be fine because we made all our lithorite interconnects last episode, so we're good, right? So that should kick off no problem. Uh, we're also going to need two modifiers, uh, which I think for modifiers, that would be these guys over here. So there's these are your input and output blocks, so I might want to place those in so I can control where the RF goes in and out and the items go in and out. Uh, but null modifier is probably what we want. I don't think there's any modifiers. Amplification, most of these require mica. Um, bandwidth, frequency, I have no idea what any of these do. I have no idea what any of these do. They're modifiers. So blank, null modifier is where we're gonna start. Um, and I should probably teach you that, right? Because I didn't teach modifiers yet. So a null modifier doesn't do anything. Um, and that's fine. It just, it just, you need it in the multi-block, right? Um, it doesn't do anything. The other modifiers do, but all modifiers require mica. I thought I knew how to make structure panels. Am I crazy? Did I put the wrong structure panel in there? Maybe it's the wrong structure panel. I don't quite know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Modifier two. Huh. You know, auto crafting is a little fuzzy with this guy, I guess is what we'll see. Um, so if we want a structure panel, we'll ask for another one of those. And then you can make modifiers. Yeah, look at that. It doesn't even want to click in with JEI. That's interesting. That's something funny right there. That's something a little bit funny right there. Not sure what that's about. But now we've also got our one lens holder. We've got our two laser cores. We need 18 panels. So that would be these. Luckily, they auto craft. Cool. So if we look at our to-do list for this, and I'm gonna, you know, all this stuff. But if we look at our to-do list, I also don't know why the coloring looks weird. I noticed that before, I'm not sure what's up with that. You can see it in these blocks too, like the shadows look like they're reversed or something. Something fuzzy. This mod's still work in progress, so we'll see how stable it is. I'm not sure. Um, and, but we could have the IO blocks from Environmental Tech. So that would be FE input. Do they need, oh, they go into the assemblers, don't they? Oh, are there multiple tiers of this? I did not realize that. FE input and output have multiple tiers. Cool, today I learned. Lithrite tier, okay, neat. I don't know if we need them. Um, alternatively, we can just do four more frames. We might be able to power... Didn't we auto-craft a bunch of frames like a minute ago? I feel like we did. Didn't we auto didn't we auto craft these 20 lithorite frames? Right? Right? I feel like we did. It's weird, right? Structure panel, clear structure panel. Huh. Weird. So if I wanted four more of these. Huh. Huh. Let's get four more interconnects then. So those should all craft just fine. And if, uh, if you missed last episode, we set this up where auto crafting happens. It's a little magical and it seems to be behaving. That's one of those, I wasn't sure how stable it would be. There's, there's things that can go wrong with it, but they haven't gone wrong yet, right? They haven't gone, yeah, they haven't gone wrong yet. So I'm hopeful that they will continue to not go wrong. Sweet. I have no idea what's up with that. I think the auto, I think it's just a little of a weird recipe configuration on the, on the part of environmental tech. That's the only thing I can think of. 
Do what now? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. That's also a weird thing. Let's make you. Let's make the Litherite Void Miner. And now we should be good. We're going to get a flux point. With energy in it. And we're going to get an ender chest ready to roll. And this thing should be ready to do its stuff. Now he needs line of sight to bedrock. Now I haven't quite decided where in the world I want to put this. But, you know, we could just pop him over here, kind of in the desert area. And this can be our designated um, thing. Now, I think he can either face up or down. So he can see the sky or he can see bedrock. I personally like the idea of, you know, mining bedrock-ish things. It's all magical, obviously. It's nothing. But it just seems cooler to me to, like, generate ores out of bedrock than generating ores out of the sky. So that's what I think I'll do. Cool. And here I thought that would be high enough. Cool. Alright, so you can go away. That's it? That's all I got? Neat. Alright. So what we'll do here then is place this guy like so. And I think we want him orientated. And I don't know what the size of his multi-block is. Auto utility. Back. Break multi-block, build multi-block, clear and build multi-block. Oh, that's neat. Let's do clear and build. I think that'll clear out anything that's in the way. Oh, hello. Sweet. So if there were any blocks in the way, it would have cleared it. So are you cool now? Is that everything? Got a few extra litharite frames. So it did say that I could do frames instead of I.O. blocks. So I can only assume that this is where the I.O. blocks would go. And that looks cool to me. Now I think I have to make an actual lens, which shouldn't be too big a deal. This is your lens from environmental core. Do I have to put them in there? I'm not quite sure. Looks like yes. OK, cool. Uh, you need energy. but you don't connect to you. So I might need that FE thingy. It used to be that this block would also accept, but it might be simply that we need the FE thingy. So let's craft that one by hand, because I'm not quite sure if I want to automate that making thing yet. So the IO from environmental tech, we're probably going to need FE input, and we're probably also going to need item output, right? So for the litharite tier version of this, we're just going to need a structure panel, block of redstone, two iron, and interconnect. So structure panel, block of redstone, couple iron, and some litharite interconnects, which I'm going to make two of because I'm going to assume that the same thing is used to make the output for items. So what are the chances I can like click the nope definitely not. That would be cool though, wouldn't it? So you, you, you two, and this should make that. And then item output. Oh, that's interesting. That is not even close. That is not even a little bit close. It's not even the same machine. I was like, oh, they're probably similar recipes, right? Nope, not even a little bit. Cool. All right. So now my FE input and my item output. Let's make this into a chest for the time being rather than the ender chest. I think that sounds like a good time to me. Um, so let's have you input power here. Hooray! And this thing should be acknowledging that he has power. I have no idea. And then your item output is over here. And tick cost is zero. So next thing we have to do is program a flash memory. And that would be this guy. So these are void minor lenses. I don't know what the deal is with the lenses. 
Um, for the Void Ore Miner... And this is your flash memory. So what I'd love to get is multi miners. So let me get a flash memory module. We need one of those. And then over here, multi miner, crystal miner, or miner, resource miner. So I think crystal is what we want. Program crystal miner. Okie dokie. And that will mine the crystals, I assume. We're learning as we go, folks. Do you have everything you need or what? Why do I feel like there's a block missing in the bottom there? And you're just not telling me about it. Do you think he's missing something? One laser lens holder, one laser core, two X laser cores. Where's the second laser core? Do you think I used one? I might have. I'm, we might be short a laser core. And if that's the case, when I go over here and auto build this, he should be happy again. He did. <gasps> now we got lasers. That's what's up. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. That makes sense. So 1800 RF a tick, is that what we're doing? Yeah. So does that mean we need another FE input? We might actually, because tick cost is 1800. Are you actually producing things? We'll find out in a minute. But let's get another FE input because 1800 is clearly not enough. And presumably the, um, higher tiers will allow more power per tick on the single block. Got it. Nice. Dum -de dum dum dum. Oh look, now we have a net gain on power. Sweet. So you're 1024 and you're 1024. Uh, and now we're gaining power because we need 1800 and we're doing 2400. So at some point we'll have minus 600 on one of those two. Or some combination thereof, right? One of these is going to drop in power in a moment and we'll see. Yeah, 776 and 1024. Makes sense. And you have gotten me my first litharite crystal. Hooray! So now in theory, this miner will produce litharite crystals and um, other things. Now, here's the first question that I have. Yeah? I would expect the RF to drop here if tick accelerating was possible. And I'm going to assume that it's intended to not be possible because in previous versions of environmental tech, they purposely blocked and disabled tick accelerating of the of the block up here. So I'm not surprised to find out that that didn't work. Uh, I would have expected if that was working, this power to drop because we'd be using more than 2400 RF a tick to maintain that, that process, right? Um, but hey, look, our first erodium crystal. Nice, that's cool. So we'll eventually be able to get our erodium, erodium void ore miner. So, so we can start teching this up. So this is the process with environmental tech, right? You start with that one. This is gonna be very slow. But then our second tier is gonna be faster and give us access to the tier three crystals. And that'll take a little less time, right? Our tier three, uh, you know, we'll get our tier three crystals. We'll, we'll make a tier three void ore miner and then we'll get the tier four crystals and the tier three void ore miner will run even faster. And eventually we'll get to the point where we're like just generating tons and tons and tons of stuff, which is kind of cool. All right. I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode. This was really just kind of like, let's get it set up so that it's ready. So we'll come back in a future episode and check in on that thing. Um, if you were really interested in getting a lot of this stuff, I would recommend making more than one of these for the initial collection of erodium crystals. Uh, and also having uh, like modifiers might not be a bad idea.
But we'll, you know, address that in the future episodes when we play more with environmental tech. For now, Dial 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Lots of good progress today on lots of different things. Um, and we'll come back next episode and check out something new. All right, for now, take it easy.